All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to the Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com. We got a fun one for you. So we saw, of course, last week was my 10 new brews. Uh, every new set comes out, I build 10 new decks. And uh, Modern Horizons 2 is a very exciting time for that because there's just a whole bunch of really powerful new cards. And we're playing Modern, of course, which is really, really cool. And one of the brews I brewed up was an Esper Reanimator deck. And the the, the core idea seemed cool, but the, the build itself was pretty off. Um, cards like Teferi weren't very good. The Monastery Mentor uh, Plan B wasn't very good, and just didn't didn't seem to work super well. But the the main combination of Persist and Unmarked Grave uh, for like the Reanimator core felt really cool. And I mused in uh, both that video and then in my article on Cool Stuff last Friday about wanting to try a mono black version of a deck based around a Plan B of Cabal Coffers and Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth, which is a commander uh, commander favor here. Of course, Urborg turning your coffers itself into a swamp means that you can make a lot of mana with only like five or six lands in play, uh, which is really, really awesome. And because all of the major reanimation targets that are non-legendary are mostly black anyway, our kind of cruelty being the most important, we sort of have this plan B of like, well, if they have a scavenging ooze or rest in peace, we can just cast our kind of cruelty rather than trying to reanimate it. So nice plan B to have along with the, uh, the core of just playing a lot of Disruption, and playing Persist and Unmarked Grave to return things. So, a lot of new cards in this deck. As we said, Persist and Unmarked Grave, uh, Entomb Light, and uh, I guess we'll say Animate Dead Light come to a Modern, which is pretty exciting. And of course, non-legendary claws here means no Grizzle Brand, but there are plenty of other good animation targets. Archon of Cruelty being the most exciting. 6-6 uh, six, six comes into play. They sack, you draw... Uh, they discard, you draw, I mean, uh, you, they gain, they lose. It just does a lot of stuff. Read the card. But uh, sort of like a mini cruel domain. And Archon is by far the best reanimation target. But Sunder Titan kills land. Grave Titan makes a, makes a huge board. Massacre murders elves and uh, and goblins and things like that. And then Ashen Riders, you're out to things like Ensnaring Bridge. And uh, Land of the Veil plays well here. We have a very, very light splash for one main deck on Burial Rites. So you can unmark Grave for a reanimation spell. A lot of discard, a lot of removal. And then one of the more exciting cards in the deck is honestly Profane Tutor. And uh, I found this card to be really, really cool. You know, usually the suspend no mana cost cards feel more like combo cards, you know, Lotus Bloom, uh, so on and so forth, Hypergenesis. But Profane Tutor is actually just pretty awesome because you spend it on turn two. It goes off on turn four. On turn two, you're not always exactly sure what path you want to go down. But on turn four, you have a good idea. You already have Persist, so you go for an Unmarked Grave. You already have a, a coffer, so you go for an Urborg. And because all your lands are untapped, when you resolve Profane Tutor, you can usually cast both things you need to cast right then and there. So very impressed with this card. Very, very cool. Uh, very good way to put the things together in the deck without needing a different color like blue. And a uh, nice smooth mana base. Very, very nice. White sideboard splash helps up the sideboard a lot as well. Uh, just a lot of great white sideboard cards. Time of Reinforcements is great. Uh, Stony Silence is great. We got uh, Plague Engineer, Fatal Push. Vindicate's a great catch-all where I can hit anything from a Rest in Peace to a Planeswalker to a Tarmogoyf to whatever. Uh, a couple other reanimation targets here. Sanctum of Steel Wind against Mono Red Prowess and Burn. And we got It That Betrays against decks like Tron, uh, Enchantress, where you need to like remove permanence in the battlefield as well as win the game. Two Spell Bombs. And then Castle Lockpoint here. One main one board is our big plan against control decks. Um, just a really, really powerful, awesome card. So, decks are really cool. I'm pumped to play. But first, we work from our sponsor at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool Stuff Inc. is proud to sponsor Jim Davis. We offer great deals on card games, tabletop RPGs, board games, and more. Get a free token featuring Jim Davis and take 5% off your next order if you use the code JIM5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, round one. Let's roll on the play. And, uh... An opening hand that is passable. Um, obviously, Brutality is good. We can also discard the Archon of the Brutality. We also have Coffers and Urborg, but we have a second Urborg, which is kind of awkward. Uh, coffers and Urborg math is double your lands minus three. So with four lands in play, we have eight minus three is five. So with five lands, we can cast Masker Worm. Uh, four lands is not enough, but I think we can keep this. I think Brutality is good enough. Um... If they have a one drop, we can nab it to rest them. So we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this. Put a mulligan to six. Put a mulligan to five. 
Ideally, they play a one drop here and we kill it. I mean, ideal scenario, I guess, is they're playing burn or something where brutality is at its best anyway. Burn prowess. They play a one drop. We get to axe it, steal a card from your hand, discard our fatty. I mean, Archon of Cruelty. Really, really good reanimation target. Uh, very, very awesome. All right, so Swamp Goat. Versus Power Plant. Uh, Tron, not really a great matchup for us because a lot of our cards don't necessarily matter. We're like Archon of Cruelty can make them, you know, discard a card, but they just have Tron and they can play a Karn or whatever. So not an ideal start here. Then obviously a bad draw there with the Karn, with the Archon as well. Um, we're going to just duress drain them because they're never going to play a creature that we can kill. So Escalate with two, uh, duress drain. And we'll be discarding one of these Archon of Cruelties. And uh, we need a little help. Hopefully we can snag like a Sylvan Scrying. And then they can't get Tron. Uh, they have a Stirrings. Alright, so they have second power plant, Mine, Sphere, Stirrings. So they're reasonably close to Tron, but not there yet. And they don't have a uh, they don't have a, a payoff yet either. So their hand is not great, but you cycle a Sphere and a Star, and they can definitely get there. And then we are looking for some interaction point. They crack for green. Definitely don't want to see a green spell here. Don't want to see a stirrings. Don't want to see a scrying. Alright, they play Urza's Mine. And we're looking for a sphere here and then a passive return. Nope, they drew a map. Alright, so not ideal. They'll have Tron in two turns, but again, no payoff necessarily yet. They have two cards in hand, a power plant, and uh, an unknown card. We have drawn a Thoughtseize. Now, they can't play a big threat next turn. We're going to hold on to the Thoughtseize for next turn. We're just going to wait. Um, unless they naturally draw Tron and have like a card in their hand, they can't play a big thing next turn. Next turn is, next turn is going to be correct the map and get a thing. So let's let them draw their card for turn and have access to that card as well. And they're going to select the star too. Perfect. So now we get a good look at whatever cards they've drawn. They're just going to play a star. It's interesting. I guess that makes sense if they want. I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. We're going to get Ugin the Spirit Dragon off of Starrings. Play a second power plant and just say go with the ability to map. That's pretty interesting. Right. And we draw unmarked grave, um, which at the moment doesn't really help us. If we had a, if we had a white source, that would work. We haven't drawn a white source yet either. Um, we probably want to just play it and go get on burrow rights, I guess. Let's just uh, let's just cast thought first, right? But we're definitely doing that. So thought sees. They have three cards in hand. They have an Ursus Mine, an Ugin, and a Chromatic Sphere. It's funny because Ugin isn't actually like that good against us, but at the same time, it's we're probably still just gonna take their their active payoff. Like Ugin to kill an Archon, obviously it's very you know, but they they play Ugin and plus it, and they can't can kill the Archon. So well, I guess we Archon would actually kill it. Um, so this comes down to like, are we okay with them playing Ugin next turn? rather than the possibility of getting something else. Um, most of their other threats are better. Mm, interesting. Interesting spot. I think Ugin's still too threatening. We'll stick to Ugin. All right, and then we're going to, whoops, not do that. Play on Markgrave. We're gonna get it on Burrow Rights. And just, you know, now any white source is also a good draw. So where is it? Where is it? So we get un unbearer rights, and uh, unfortunately we have a second herb warfare stinks, but and we'll just say go. So not an amazing spot, but very reasonable. Now we're drawing to any persist. I mean Liliana would be fine, I guess. Now they have Tron, so like the top of their deck is very live, so there's some pressure on us to actually like kill them or do something. But all right, here it comes. Play the sphere. They're drawn to a boom boom. And of course, if they, if they hit a uh, a big one here, we could be in trouble. 
We played Karn, they would, they would minus on Urborg, but yeah, that means we can't uh, draw White Source either, so. Sylvan Scry, okay. Sanctum of Ugin, okay. All right, so any White Source, that is a Swamp. That is a Swamp. All right, so four, eight, yeah, that's five mana. All right, not a not a great draw on our part. Our hand really hasn't come together super well. Um, oh my god, but neither is theirs. So you're telling me there's a chance? Okay, well there's persist. So now we're uh, we're online, so we can get back our archon, start drawing cards, and doing our thing. They have three cards in hand. Obviously, they have air in their hand too. So they're still drawing to any uh, any boom boom, but. Archon does close things out pretty quick. It also triggers on attacks too. So they turn a forest. We hit a profane tutor, which plays for me. All right. So they just discarded the forest. Interesting too, because like they have no green if they draw stirring, something like that. So, uh, uh, Karn. All right. I mean, Karn's pretty good. Um, we're still drawing to any white for uh, a rights, but now actually we have we have no big creature in our graveyard. So they minus here on Archon. Put an Ulamog in their hand. I think we're in trouble. I think we're in trouble here. All right. Suspend so Profane Tutor. And they have uh, enough mana for a rule log next turn. Yeah, I think this is it. Well, now we draw the white, obviously. So, tough game there. Uh, we couldn't find the white really enough. We drew two Urborgs, too many fatties. Uh, and then Brutality, of course, is not great against Tron. So, we were fortunate that they're like, the hand was a little slow, but kind of a not great game for us. Again, not really like a great matchup. It does feel like, you know, a card like Archon of Cruelty is good and all, but like they can just go bigger than it and it can't really stop them. So, uh, Ash and Rider on a land kind of thing if it betrays kind of cool so we're bringing our sunny silences which are huge um we're bringing our vindicates we're going to bring in if it betrays and uh we got to cut these rule spells obviously aren't very good fatal push bone shards not very exciting um let's say massacre worm also not very good frexian arena probably not great either i think brutality is still okay as like a a duress plus discard outlet um Yeah. So Arena's like pretty bad. You bring in the castle lock, Thwain. Just have an extra mana source over. I'll leave the arena, in, I guess. Arena's pretty bad against them, but Alright. Let's let's try this. So if you resolve a stony, stony's really, really good at slowing them down, which is great. Alright, so thoughts he's acquisition, tutor, tutor. Yeah, it's pretty good. Sounds pretty good. We can keep this. Got Tutor, we have Persist, and the Tutor will get the uh, other part of the combo. Opponent Mulligan six. Opponents, Mulligan's Snap Mulligan to five. Our opponent's experienced strong player. They have Snap Mulligan multiple times now. They understand how the game works. So kudos to them. I don't get to give my Tron speech for the 100,000th time. A lot of good cards against Tron were printed in uh, in Modern Horizons. Um, didn't really gain anything and it lost a lot. So interesting to see where Tron ends up in the metagame because of that. All right. Their hand is Star Sphere Forest Karn Tower. I feel like I might have gotten to four here, honestly. Maybe I can't give it, give it Tron's beach. So take the map. And uh, we're looking pretty good. Their hand's kind of weak. And now we have we have a little wiggle room to be able to play the Profane Tutor on turn two. And set up for our future turns, which is great. <laughs> sure. Let's just say our arena is not great, but it's fine. Profane tutors, they go. All right, make a green. Sack the sphere or star, I mean. Play forest, play forest, play forest. Play. Two towers, Sauron and Saruman. Okay. So their hand is forest, Karn, card, card. And they are uh, a little off, a little off. So I would take a land here, guess, for Xerion, I guess, or on Markgrave. All right, that works too. All right, now 
what do we unmark grave for? Because we can get Sundering Titan actually, and we can use the the fact that their lands are swamps to kill one of their lands. Um, I guess getting it that betrays is also quite good. It's a little slower, but very unlikely they assemble Tron in the next two turns. We have a tutor going off as well. We can just get a land. So next turn we can thought seize and persist. Yeah, if the betrays is not immediate, but if we untap with it, the game ends. I'm down. I'm down. All right, let's go. Hopefully no relic here, of course, but it's mine. Yeah. Untap. Resolve tutor. I almost want to just get a land here, honestly. Like... I want to cast Thought Seize and Persist this turn. And I don't even think it's worth it getting Coffers. I might just get the Godless Shrine. We have White for Stony Silence too, or Vindicate. Yeah, I don't think Coffers is doing a ton for us. This Coffers is better in slower matchups. This is not a slower matchup. So let's just get a... Let's actually get a fetch land. We can tap it for black with herb ward and get the white later if you want it. So do that. Grave Titan, sure. Play Thought Seize. Their hand is Karn Karn Ugin for the forest. So basically what this comes down to is can they rip, rip natural Tron or not? Uh, they rip natural Tron next turn, they might win. But otherwise we're in amazing shape, so. Even though that is redundant, we're taking card anyway. We're going to persist on all that betrays. And we're going to say go and hope they can't draw Tron naturally. So no natural Tron draw here. No Urza's power plant. All right, that's game. Whew. All right, it's game three on the draw. Uh, again, Arena's not really great. I mean, like, we should bring in the castle. Maybe a land just better than Arena, so we can guarantee Because we might mulligan a little more aggressively, so... And the arena is just like almost unplayable. So bring in the castle. That's basically it. There are definitely more. If, if we if Tron's popular, there are plenty of cards we can we can board. There's like the new like anti-tron sinkhole kind of card. It's black black to kill a color a land that produces colorless or snow land. And then overloads to kill all lands of a type of the, like that. So there are certainly tools we could have on our sideboard if we wanted to try and beat Tron, but put it mulligans again. Uh, we're going to mulligan too, unfortunately. Even though we have persistent on Mark, we only have one land, so we're going to mulligan. Unmark grave, persist, land, land, rights, titan. You can keep this. Keep this. Put a mulligan to five. We'll uh, ship Sundering Titan here. It's honestly the card we might. I should not have an board. Never mind. Yeah, we don't really have like a card that's like lock down against them. So they only mulligan to five. I'd like a draw thoughts these are in position here. Four marsh flats. Um play lands they go. Um we have a turn three boom boom but that might not be fast enough unfortunately. Especially with no discard here. Alright, that's a good sign at least. They're floundering a little bit again. Going for a green again. All right, so haven't actually played a search spell yet. Hopefully, they don't natural Tron us. Where are we get? Ball coffers. Like, I mean, Ashen Rider is the most immediately impactful. So we do need immediate impact. It's probably just Ashen Rider, even though it's not, like, not that exciting. Um, Archon of Cruelty is okay, but can't take him off Tron. We don't have an Herb Warg in play yet, so we can't use Sunder and Titan to take him off Tron. And then It the Betray is just way too slow here, I think, on the draw. Um... Yeah, I think it's just Ashen Rider. 
Um, this is a spot where Terrastodon would be pretty good in our deck if we had Terrastodon. Which honestly might be a better card than Ashen Rider, just in general. Because we can just kill two of her lands, but... Ashen Rider it is. And uh, we'll say go. And please don't natural draw me. Yeah, Terrastodon might be better, might be better than... Uh, oh, wow. So they missed... And now I think we're back in we're back in business. Vindicate. That's also really good. So just gonna keep fetching or mild deck thinning or whatever. We don't really use our fetch lines for anything useful. So the pushes are out, you know. And uh fire away here. Let's get Ashen Rider. Uh oh. They have surgical extraction in their deck. Oh my god. Wow. All right. Didn't see that coming. Uh, Surgical in, in Tron's pretty weird. Usually they have relics, maybe like a, a Grat Figure's Cage, but all right, that's pretty gross. Obviously, it's just a, a Coffin Purge. We have no other Ashen Riders in our deck, but all right. I mean, hopefully they don't naturally draw Tron here. We can Vindicate their uh, their Power Plant and just keep playing Magic, I guess. Well, I guess they, they're they scooping to, to Vindicate. So they, they, they see your hand when you cast Surgical. I guess their hand is so bad they just knew they can't beat a Vindicate. That's a weird one. All right. I guess their hand just took all all seven all seven drops, and then they, they knew they were gonna lose their power plant. Right. Sweet. Vindicate. So not a not a great matchup for us. And uh take that one down. One enough. We like it. We like it. Definitely um it is possible Terrastodon's better than Ashen Rider, because Terrastodon can deal with most things Ashen Rider can deal with, honestly, and then does so in a more powerful way. And then like Occasionally, you can just reanimate it on turn three, kill all three of your lands, put 18 power in play, and kill your opponent. Real popular cube card. Terrastodon, definitely a super cool one. It's cool also that Stony Silence gets to play double uh, double duty against Affinity and Artifact decks, and it's also very good against Tron, too. So the tools are there for the most part. I wouldn't mind having like one or two more cards versus them, but yeah. Terrastodon over Ashen Rider might be a thing. It's cool that every other reanimation target is castable but with only one godless trying to be like ash rider isn't really castable anyway so all right round two well it's playing lurus as are most people um it's fine hand's certainly fine not amazing we're a little light on, on pieces but we're just gonna stray each other's hands we have but we have a uh, bone shards and a profane tutor we can keep this on the draw See what kind of Lurus deck they are, which could be up there. Affinity. Affinity? No, what is this? Springleaf Drum Ornithopter? Oh, they're the stupid hammer deck. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess Thoughtseize is pretty good here, so hopefully pretty good. And Bobble Us, sure. Uh, nothing in their deck can cost more than three, so. Check out what's going on over here. Pure Steel Paladin and Colossus Hammer. Uh, okay, so they can play the hammer and equip the Ornithopter. But then I can just kill the Ornithopter and they've got nothing. Um, they're going to draw a card next turn also. And they can easily go Paladin and something else. Yeah, I think we're just going to kill the... Take the Paladin, take 10. Kill the Ornithopter. Bone shards, it's fine. Let's take Paladin and say go. Again, taking 10 isn't really a big deal. Like, versus Saga, that card's really good. That's actually insane because the Saga gets them both a creature and a way to get Colossus Sammer. So, all right, they have one card in hand. We've drawn a Thought Seize, which is a little awkward. Um, the Saga can't make a creature unless they draw a land. All right. I guess we're going to Thought Seize them. This could be a pretty painful turn, but damn it. That's really bad. So they have a, a land to make a token off Urza Saga. Urza Saga is just so good. I'm just going to get a Swamp. We're going to play 
Bone shards. Kill this. Discard unburial rights. So now they can saga up to chapter two. Play clearing. Make a creature. Get your ink moth nexus too. Oh, gross. That was a really good draw. Uh, okay. And then next turn, they're just going to get a hammer off of... Dude, we're just dead. And Saga's really good in this deck. Saga's really good in every deck, but... Dude, we're just dead. Well, that was a pretty good draw. Because um, they can just activate the Nexus in response to the, uh, the Saga going off. And go get the hammer. It auto goes in the Nexus and we're just dead. That was an insane draw. Um, you know, they were going to have a construct or two. I guess we were dead to the construct plus there was a saga. Man. All right. That was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That was pretty good. Pretty good hand. Uh, okay. What do I want here? Did they even like see us discard? I started on Burner Rights, didn't I? Wow. That was, that was something. Um, so we're going to bring in Fatal Push. Explosives. Stony Silence. I mean, like, it doesn't really do a ton against them, honestly. Because they never actually equip the hammer. They just, like, use the cards that make it equip. It turns off, like, Springleaf Drum. But right, let's cut the Arena and Grave Titan. Honestly, Sundering Titan's not great either. Um, Brutality's actually pretty good. Discard spells are, like... Pretty important. I don't even know if we want these. It doesn't stop Saga. It doesn't stop like the Thopter itself. Yeah. Maybe one of these Vindicates. And we can shave. Liliana's pretty good actually. Push Bone Shards, discard. They could have like Rest in Peace too. That would be pretty annoying. Hmm. Cut like a tutor, maybe. Tutor's a little slow. We're on the play. Push Vindicate. Sorry, we gotta cut one more card. We do have Vindicate, right? Like, probably. Alright, let's cut a tutor. It's a little slow. They're not really going to be, like, disrupting as much. So, let's try this. Let's try this. Kind of a weird game, too. We had, like, we had, like triple thought seeds, but, like, their hand was empty on turn two anyway. Um... Would have had a better game force on the play for sure. That deck's pretty explosive, but pretty uh pretty glass cannony, so maybe on the play we're gonna hit multiple things. That's alright. On the play now. And we've got a one lander we cannot keep. It's kinda close, but yeah, we can't keep it. It's really it's really close, honestly, because we have good discard spell, good removal spell, return thing, big fatty, and way discard, which can't guarantee we're gonna draw a land or two. So also four coffers are like those aren't real lands in this at this point. So we're gonna mulligan into all right, it's a turn three, uh turn three, whatever we want. So we're gonna ship the swamp here. Let's get our white source or board unmarked grave and then blank persist or Liliana. Yeah, so we'll ship the coffers. I'm sorry, can I just ship a swamp? All right, so flats go. Please don't have a really good hand again. Esper Sentinel. I mean, I guess. It's like annoying, I suppose. I we're just going to play into it, but. All right, well, unmark Ray, let him draw a card. What are we going to get here? Probably just Archon. Yeah. 
Massacre Arms is a little interesting, but like they'll see it. So once they see it, they'll play into it. Let's get Archon. Archon's pretty sweet. And Sega. Hope there's no rest in peace in our future. So that was kind of weird because like they're not really trying to play a longer game when they draw cards and stuff. They're kind of just trying to like dump the right hand on turn two or three. Obviously, like I guess it forces their opponent to like play into them so they can draw a card or two off of it, but like would they play a one mana thought cast in this deck? Kind of thing, you know. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Well, now we're live. Now we're live. Um, they could, in theory, kill us next turn with Ink Moth Nexus plus Hammer, but I guess we can block with the, uh, the Archon if, like, absolutely necessary. We draw Thoughtseize. So, in theory, we could Thoughtseize them. We could persist, let them draw a card, then Thoughtseize them. We're gonna, we're gonna do that, actually. So, we'll give them the card draw. They're probably gonna sack the, the S percentile to the Archon, and then we'll Thoughtseize them. Again, volume of cards should matter. Just getting the right cards. So, let's see if this is good enough. So, is that creature? No, nope, they're gonna sack the Stonewall Mystic. All right, they're gonna discard a Stonewall Mystic. We draw Masker Worm. Okay. All right, we're gonna throw these them. So they draw a card, and then their hand is Hammer, Hammer, Sentinel. Age, Stoneforge, Ink Moth, Saga. So the aid here is the important card. As we were saying, it's not really volume of cards. It's just like the, what card is the most important card. And without the aid, their hand doesn't really do anything. So that's good for us. Let's take the aid. And their hand is these six cards. Next turn, we have Liliana. And we're also getting pretty close to actually just casting Masker Worm. So cool. Game. Sweet. So despite drawing two extra cards, it just didn't really matter because, you know, they, again, they're not really a card volume deck. They're a specific card deck. So that was cool. That was definitely a cool game. Um, we have plenty of removal for Esper Sentinel. So it doesn't really, think it really changes anything for us. Um, just send it back. Just send it back. I think this hand's actually great. Uh, put them all against the six. We just have like Thoughtseize, Tutor, Liliana, and then Tutor goes off to get a reanimation spell, and we have Archon. So, this hand's great. We can keep this. Like them mulling the six here. I, think they, I don't think his hand beats that they're like their upper, upper, upper range of hands, but I think his hand is like pretty good otherwise. So, all right, they have the Thopter Drum. They have Aid too. Oh, Sentinel. Ugh. All right, that's really annoying. All right. I mean, sure, we're still going to guess Thoughtseize. And their hand is Aid Pure Steel. Sure. So, again, once again, take the important card. Leave them with cards that are like, you know, they're whatever, but. Land. Put Luris in hand. Sure. They can cast the Aid from the Graveyard. That is, that is definitely a thing. Let's have another herb work. That's kind of awkward. All right. I mean, all right. So you can play Lurus and Aid here. They don't actually have a equipment yet, but I mean, it's still two cards in hand. They don't have a Nexus either, so I guess that's uh, not the worst for us. We draw a fatal push, but we can't obviously. Um, we can't re revolt it. Why is Luris so good in every deck? I'm pretty tired of seeing Luris in like 
a dozen decks in the format. Um, Liana's like pretty bad here. Even Fatal Push is pretty bad. They have a Paladin in their hand, and they also have a, a Hammer. We can't really do anything about it, because obviously the Paladin will allow for a free equip. And we can't kill enough artifacts, turn off Metalcraft. If I plus Liliana, they can attack and kill it, which I guess isn't that bad. Oh, man. Obviously, if I kill Sentinel, I just recast it. So that's not good either. I'm just going to play Liliana. I, this, this feels pretty bad, but... So get to draw a card, we plus. It sucks if we had Masker Worm in our hand or something like that. You know, we could like go get Masker Worm. That'd be really cool. So they discard the Paladin. They can obviously just recast it with Lurus. They're gonna are they gonna like their their clearing? That's a good sign for us. That's a pretty big sign of weakness when the, that's a, that's the first play of our turn. Tap two, play Paladin from the bin. Play a new clearing. Still have three cards in their hand. They just have a hammer. So they just drew hammer off their clearing, I guess. That's pretty disgusting. All right, we're dead. I mean, we're taking... Yeah, we're just dead. All right, pretty gross. Oh my God, now they're, they're going to Cheerios on us. So they just drew hammer off their clearing and they drew another artifact off their uh, thing for pure still Paladin too. And it makes a mana for free. Oh my god. All right. They just teed off on us. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I feel like our hand wasn't great against their upper range, and this seems like pretty pretty high on their upper range, so. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? This deck probably wants one damnation. This deck probably wants one damnation somewhere between main and board to go to the tutors. I'm not sure if that like wins us the game here, but if we have a damnation in our deck, that might like go a reasonable long way. All right, come on, opponent, just kill me. I'm dead. All right, I'm, they're gonna figure it out eventually. I'm just gonna concede. Like we're dead. So, all right, so that was tough. That was tough. That was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool version of that deck. Urza Saga does seem really, really good in that deck, and then uh, Esper Sentinel was like. It was better that game, I guess. I don't know if it's like great. Because again, it's more about the specific cards, but yeah, that was tough. That was a tough one. Obviously, Loris is still pretty stupid. And then uh definitely a combo deck. They definitely found that hammer at the right time. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? One on one. Alright, so round three on the play. And our hand is pretty good. Pretty good. We like this. You can keep this. We've got uh Inquisition, we've got a tutor, we've got a, a way to discard our boom boom. Go get ourselves a uh go get ourselves a reanimation spell. Haven't gotten to see the coffers Urborg engine in action yet, really, because those are both two two hyper linear matchups. Um but we also didn't see any graveyard hate from either one of them. I saw surgical, but um, you know, the, the coffers is more of a plan B when they're playing a slower game and have graveyard hate. So Pony Ball gets the five. We are going to take a look and see what they're working with. That's a that's a, a more interactive deck. So Stoneforge, Fatal Push, Skyclave. Really, really awkward because we want to cast Bone Shards to discard our Archon. But the best card in their hand is Stoneforge Mystic because these cards are so bad against us. Um, I guess we just take this... Maybe we're in no rush. Maybe we just take the... Because also, if we take the something else and they draw like a Thoughtseize, I'll stick Stoneforge. It's definitely like the best card in their hand by like a lot. And like the other cards aren't very effective against us. But if we don't take Stoneforge and try and like set up Bone Shards and they like Thoughtseize our Tutor or 
something. It just makes things much, much harder for us. And their hand's really bad. Let's just make sure they, they can't cheese us out. Second herb work. You bastard. All right, so play this. Spend, spend, spend the tutor. And say go. All right, so get, get, get a guy on the shrine. I think they have Fatal Push Skyclave, so they have the typical problem that black-white decks have where they just don't have the right cards. Neither one of those cards do essentially anything against us. I mean, Skyclave can tag a Liliana, I suppose, but all right, we just draw a Swamp. I mean, this might be a just like hard cast Archon kind of game. Um, we're just going to play Swamp and say go. We'll see if we get this tutor. I'm not sure we get to get the tutor yet. We can just honestly get a, get a castle lock win. Like. This would be a cool spot for like Frexian Arena maybe. They didn't have Skyclave. Like, they also have Vindicate too probably. So. Silent Clearing. All right. So they have Skyclave push card card. We're about to cast Profane Tutor. Um, castle's kind of tough, so our hand is kind of full. Hmm. Just on tap. What are we going to get with this Profian tutor? What are we going to get? Hmm. Liliana's like not bad. You can discard an Urborg. They discard a card. They Skyclave it. And now we have the ability to bone shards of discarding Archon. But again, like we need six lands to cast Archon. I guess actually double coffers can do it, right? So five lands, ten, that's seven. And then take the seven, put it into the Six five. I think double coffers says do it. Um, we're never getting tutors ever, right? If you're like not sure, you just like put it off till future turns. Get a second cabal coffers. I kind of like that actually. Let's get a second cabal coffers. It's a little weird, but that was a great draw. So let's fire up this Thoughtseize and see what's going on over there. Skyclave, Skyclave, Caldera, Fatal Push. Oh my god, their hand is bad. Uh, okay. I mean, Push is actually blank against us, and Skyclaves are not much better. So we'll take Caldera. I guess in case they draw Stoneforge, they want two threats. And then we'll just play Cabal Coffers and say go. And then I think we can guess Archon next turn with the, the, the Coffer's Math is always. Coffer's Math is double your lands minus three, which is seven. But with the second Coffer's, it's minus two plus five. Dothy Voidwalker. Well, good thing we, uh, we're just playing the plan B here because obviously the little Graveyard Hate main deck here. I, I think this works for us. Another Coffer, sure. So Black, Black, Coffer's, Coffer's. Yeah, that's eight. That's perfect. I could even kill the Voidwalker if I want to. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I need to, obviously, because we have the Archon. So, it's hard to guess Archon. We're playing Tron. Plan B in action. And uh, they discard. We draw. Bought Voidwalker dies. And, uh, I mean, again, they have Skyclave, Skylake, Highclave, Fatal Push in their hand. Now, our hand's not much better, but... All right, what do you got for me, opponent? Yeah, typical black-white problem, just drawing the wrong cards. All right, so now things are going to get much harder because they're going to have probably Graveyard Hate as well as the, the Void Walkers, just more main deck Graveyard Hate. So we're going to lean on our plan B a little more here. We're going to bring in our Vindicates, our Castle. 
explosives on two is like okay if we're gonna push uh so bring in these I'm gonna shave down on graveyard stuff a little and we're gonna cut this ashen rider not super castable I would like all of our threats to be castable discard spells fatal push bone shards brutality hmm not short to cut honestly I mean, I guess Bone Shards, if they have a Rest in Peace, whatever, is like pretty bad value-wise. Uh, could cut the Unburial Rights. I'll just cut a land for this second castle. I don't really hate that, honestly. Let's try this. Okay. Um, I mean, not the best hand, but I think we're going to keep... It's definitely not great. It's pretty soft to graveyard hate, but... We have a way to kill. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it's hard to ball get against the deck with like with like grief and and thought teases and stuff. They don't have anything. Oh, that's cool. One drop. That's a one drop technically. Um, I'm gonna brutality their two drop. Am I gonna brutality their two drop? I just want to hold this in case they have a. Uh, in case they have a. Um, or I have a way to discard a big creature later. If they play any of their two drops. I guess I'll just push it, untap, and tutor. So we're going to shock here. It's obviously pretty transparent and awkward, but I want to guarantee tutor on turn two if we kill their one their two drop here. And I don't want to play brutality into uh, on turn two without a big thing to discard. So... See if they cast two drop or not. Sure. There's Stoneforge. Getting batter skulls. Fine. Let's kill this. All right, so there's your boom boom. So that's what we were, we were holding off for. So now we tutor. I guess the awkward thing is if they uh, if they play a Void Walker and we discard the Archon to the Brutality to kill the Void Walker, the Archon actually gets exiled. They're going to play Urborg and help me out? That's great. Thanks. That's really nice of you. All right, land go. kind of want to make a land drop here. That's close to a land drop. Um, all right, I'm just say go. Tough spot against a Vindicate deck too, so you can just kill my land. Pretty wild, they just didn't do anything there. It's quite the pair of, pair of basic lands. All right, here we go. Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay. Um, what do we get here? It sucks is like, if we knew we were drawing a land, we get Liliana. But if we don't draw a land, we're like in pretty big trouble. I guess I could just like, duress. I guess I maybe I screwed up last turn. I should have just duress discarded them and set up for my, my fatty. Yeah, I, I screwed up last turn. I was looking at this too much as a kill spell, I think. I just sort of like, shortcutted. Um... Yeah. All right. We were casting Profane Tutor. What am I getting now? Yeah, that was a big mistake. Okay. I'm just going to get a Coffers. Like, 
We need a third land here. I would love to get Liliana, but I just can't guarantee we're drawing a land. So I'll take a Coffers. I'm sure we'll draw a land too. Yeah, obviously. All right. So we'll just Brutality, Duress, um, and discard Archon of Cruelty over Sundering Titan, I think. We also have Hardcast on Burrow Rights, which is kind of cool too. We can just keep like firing in the uh, reanimation spells. All right, yeah, so we're going to two modes, UU, discard Archon. Give them a Duress, they have five cards in hand. One of them is a Batter Skull. They have Ephemerate? Oh, they have Solitude. Solitude's kind of gross. Um, all right, we'll take the Ephemerate. Now... Still pretty good for us if we uh, make them use... I guess they can like, use the Rebirth on it too. Alright, sure. I mean, are we casting Titan next turn? We have four lands. That's eight. That's five. Five to three. We have seven mana next turn. Alright, so they play... Courtyard and say go. Inquisition of Kozilek. That was actually pretty good. Uh, we can now take the white card. Actually, they can just hard cast Solitude, I suppose. But we could take the white card or the Rebirth and keep them off of actually putting Solitude on the battlefield. I think that um, them exiling Archon but not having a creature for Sword of Fire and Ice is a pretty big win. What are we at here? Let me just make sure. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we have seven mana. Six mana. Six mana. So we get Inquisition and then Unburial Rights. We're one land from casting Titan, which is kind of cool too. Um... So question do I take Rebirth? If I take, if I take the Oriok Champion, then they can't actually pitch for Solitude, but they can just hard cast it next turn. Um, I think I'd rather them just kill my Archon. We'll just take our draws. So we'll just take the Rebirth. We'll play Archon. They'll pitch it. I guess they could just also untap and hard cast it, which also isn't that bad, I don't think. I just don't want them sorting me. Is that flying? Is it? No. Um. Huh. Tough spot here. Sorry, folks. We're just gonna figure this out. Um. And then Titan will kill two of their lands, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, I'll just take. <sighs> Sorry. Hardcast Solitude. Eat my Archon. And then we, I guess we're like, we draw a card off the thing as well. We draw for turn. Yeah, let's, let's give him a chance to make a mistake, I think. All right, and then we're going to unbear rights, targeting Archon. They might just pitch the Oriok champion, honestly. And then heart, I pitch, I discard the Oriok champion to the Archon. And then just hard cast solitude. Yeah, okay. We draw Vindicate. That's cool. Okay, so say so go. We really like to draw a land next turn. We really like to draw a land next turn. A land or a discard outlet, I guess. Alright, so they're gonna actually kill it on my turn, sure. So draw for turn. It's another Archon. We have six mana, not eight mana, so sure. So move to attacks, they'll kill they'll solitude, and then we just uh vindicate the sword of fire and ice. And again, we're one land off of uh, of casting Titan or Archon now, so. All right, so I'm going to gain a bunch of life, which is cool. And now we have six mana, so we can, and we'll Vindicate. The options are Vindicate Sword or Vindicate Solitude itself. 
Um, they have batter skull card in their hand. I think it's the creature, actually. I don't think it's the sword. Uh, whoops. Just hit that. So you go. And again, we're drawing to any land in our entire deck or any discards or any, any self discard spell. There are very few misses for us here. They play land. And I assume they're going to play Batter Skull. All right. So our Sunder Titan's like not really that important anymore because I have six lands in play, but Archon would be insane here. All right. There it is. So. Looking at eight mana total. Hard cast Archon. And that's their that's their hand, their creature. We draw. Now they, now they have actual nothing. And we draw Unmarked Grave. So next time we can go nuts and reanimate something else too. And of course it's not legendary, so we can have two Archons in play, which is cool. Play Clearing. They had a Leon in the Void too. <clears throat> Pop that. And I think this is game. I don't, I don't think they can beat this and the cards in my hand. That's game. Sweet. All right. Two and one. Definitely saw, as I said, you know, the the Cabal Coffers plan, not really for the Tron matchup or the linear matchups, but very, very good in the fair matchups. That was great. That was really cool. I'm actually going to fast Q time here, too. That's great. All right. So match number four on the play with discard spell, tutor on Margrave. Sure. Turn one, thought sees you. And their hand is, okay, so this is a living end deck. They've got, man, this is a good, this is a good living end draw. They just have two Cascade spells and, uh, and two Cyclers. I honestly think we take the Riverwinder. I guess we have a, a Duress for the, uh, the Outburst. This is interesting. Um, so yeah, they're playing living end, obviously. We take Shardless, and then we Profane Tutor, then we Brutality, the Outburst. Yeah, all right. All right, so your turn. Kind of a weird one, honestly. I don't know how we really like line up here. Just naturally draw Godless Shrine, sure. Um. They also have multiple Spire Bluff Canals, so we can't even, like, Sundering Titan them. There's not a spot where Terrestinon would be pretty good. I think not playing Terrestinon is a pretty big, big, pretty big mistake, and that's a pretty big deck building error. All right, Profane Tutor, go. They cycle this. Definitely have Force Negation in deck, possibly Solitude also. Probably Solitude, too, honestly. Sanctum, man, they're making our Sundering Titan look so bad. Bone shards. I mean, it's funny because if we just like put something good in our graveyard, it makes their living end awkward, but we also want to reanimate it too. So, like, this is a, a pretty interesting spot. I, I mean, we're just going to brutality them here. And discard the outburst, I guess. They're gonna waker of waves. If they have another cascade spell, I guess they get to put some things in play, but we can just like pop off a boom boom next turn. So alright. I'm just gonna do rest, I'm not gonna discard anything. Okay. Why would they do this in response to my brutality? I can't take that with brutality. Okay, sure. Oh, they're a force. Okay, well, I can tell them we can do here, so 
I mean, if they cast Living End this turn, they just get three things. We can beat three things. All right. And they just use a force too. Okay. I mean, such an awkward, uh, awkward gameplay. We can get like, I mean, so we're getting, we're getting a, if we get a, a persist here of an unmarked grave can get whatever we get. We could just get like a Phyrexian arena and just like draw some cards um, and just kind of like play for a bit of a longer game. And then next time we put play on Mark Grave and just put a boom boom in the graveyard so they can't effectively, uh, they can't effectively living end. Um, get four cards in end. Again, if I just go for, like, we, we could obviously reanimate here, but if I do that, this never dies, too. So, like, if they, living in, this will get exiles and won't even kill them on the way out. Such a weird, uh, a weird game here. I'm going to get Phyrexian Arena. I think I'm just going to play for a little bit of a longer game. This feels really weird, but... That was a good draw. That was definitely a good draw. All right, so we have the Thought Seize into your Arena here. See if they like have an outburst response. No, yeah, they do. All right, so that's pretty gross. They just like drew another cascade card. Um, that certainly makes my that's like so awkward because like if I knew I was drawing thought seize, then I just get a reanimation spell, obviously. Um, all right, and their hand is they're actually. They don't have a lot else going on. I mean, Navis Arena is like worthless, basically, unfortunately. But we can just like bone shard to discard the arena, kill the big boom boom, and we have seven power on the board. So we're on like a two turn clock. Um, yeah, that seems. They only have one living in left in theory. It seems reasonable. All right. I guess we're gonna also cast on Mark Grave and just like try and mise. So we'll get Poach Archon of Cruelty. Yeah, kind of a weird game. Like, we obviously, like, we did deal with two of their Cascaders. So, like, we're kind of hoping they don't have a Cascade card that turn. Obviously, they do. So, like, it worked out perfectly for them. But I thought we had a little more time to set up. Um, okay, so... They're just living in Scalding Tarn. Or no, wait, what? Unmarked Grave. That was actually not bad. Um, all right. So you're telling me there's a chance. Where is it? There it is. Get him bear rights. And then next turn we can make an Archon. Um, they certainly have possible answers. And they're at the point now that they can almost just like hard cast stuff too. Sanctum. Okay. All right. I mean, they sack the agent. They discard a card. We end up trading the Archon with the 5-5, five five, which isn't the end of the world. We draw Persist. We're, just, we're still going to play uh, Unburger Rights here. Don't have drawn Force, please. Okay. 
and they discard this agent, their spiral, we draw bone shards, and now we go to four life. Oh, and it's a six six because of the uh because it was it, it wasn't a persist, it was a umbrella rights too. That's awesome. So you're telling me there's a chance. Would love to draw another boom boom. I guess we can't actually target um can't actually target the striped river river winder, but it's tarn. Okay. So just don't draw another living end on me or, or a cascader. That was also pretty good. Um I guess it wasn't actually great, but all right, move to his axe. No outburst. Trigger Archon. They're gonna fetch in response. So they have a perhaps a hard cast salty here. Yep. Which is great. So it doesn't actually do anything. Trigger goes off. We get to Liliana, whatever other creature we don't sacrifice. They take six. I think this game is pretty much over. Um they have to draw exactly a Cascade card. And even then we still have like a Bone Shards and a Persist behind too. Oh, I should have put a land. That was, I should have reminded better. All right, don't draw a Cascade, or cascade card. What can I say? Obviously, they can, like, in theory, cycle into it, possibly, but. What they have? They have one, two, three, four creatures. Even if they were to cascade into it, we get to persist back our Archon and have a Bone Shards. So we can kill two of them. So he might have still been an okay, if unless they, like, cycled into it, but that was pretty good. That was a pretty cool game. It's a pretty cool game. Let's bring in our Nile Spell Bumps. Bring in. It's funny, we kind of want to just, like, have a bunch of boom booms to discard and like put in the graveyard so they can't uh excuse me do stuff uh death one fatal push out brutality is really awkward because it can't even hit subtlety or shardless it can only hit the force or the the outburst bone shards is pretty bad too arena is pretty bad i think i want to keep all the boom booms honestly like and just like dump stuff in my graveyard the problem is that I guess the only ways we really have to discard cards are Liliana and Brutality. We don't have many ways to discard beyond that. But Bone Shards is so useless until they actually cast Living End, so I don't think we want that at all. Um, all right. Yeah, this is like... I do wish we had like another Liliana or two or some other way to discard cards, but bring in the Boom Booms, cut the Pushes, the Shards... The arena. We're not bringing a castle also. Don't think you want to vindicate. Play agent area. This is all reasonable. And the blue pitch spell is really good in this one. Uh, Stalty. Just like a, a pitch for creatures and planeswalkers. Then it also goes to the graveyard for, for living end too. It's pretty cool. All right, we have Brutality, which is perfect. So we get to turn to Brutality, discard either Grave Titan. We should discard both of them. Put them all against a six. So we can get two big Boom Booms in the graveyard to reanimate and then to block on their their living ends. So this feels pretty good for us once they have some sort of like graveyard hate. But aside from like Leywan of the Void, so much much they can have that they can actually play in their deck. They can play the the, the green Incarnation. Fire Bluff Canal. Liliana also plays, honestly. I guess I can't actually double Brutality because there's only a creature in play, but now we have Liliana too, so. Cycle Curator, sure. Definitely have a question of what do I want to discard on turn two, the Grave Titan or the If That Betrays? It's kind of a fun question. I can't really deal with each, with either, I mean. And they're both really, really impactful. One more 
Mercury. All right. I think it's uh it's it the betrays. I think it's it it, it the betrays. So escalate. You you betrays. Take a little looky loo. Now we got a boom boom in the graveyard. The one I guess living end. Their hand is outburst. They have two foundation breakers and an endurance. So endurance is the pitch card that I can shuffle my graveyard. It's pretty annoying. But, and then these two foundation breakers just literally don't do anything. Actually, we have the Nile Spell Bombs. So take the outburst. Their hand's pretty bad. Um, endurance is really annoying. But we can work our way around that, I suppose. We can get Liliana in play and kind of do that kind of stuff. So endurance, they pitch a green card, and target player puts all cards from labor on the bottom of their library. So we could just hmm. all right, they're gonna main phase Waker of Waves looking for a land. They found it. So again, they have a pitch spell to deal with our graveyardy stuff we draw inquisition of kozilek which is actually a really good draw um we're gonna fire this off right now this will probably force them to endurance in response Let's see how bold they are Ooh, wow okay so but they drew the outburst which is gross so we could take endurance here obviously and then uh persist the the it that betrays, but then which gets living in outburst. We could also take the endurance and then just unmark grave, put another boom boom in the graveyard, and now they just like can't living end safely anymore. Um, which is also pretty interesting. I think we take the endurance, honestly. Their hand's so bad. Uh and an outburst is worthless, so I was thinking to exile my graveyard. Yeah, I'm taking the endurance. And I'm just gonna play on Mark Grave and get a uh get a boom boom. Also, if we have multiple boom booms in the graveyard, then even if they do living end, we still went make out on top. So let's do this. Let's unmark grave for um probably Archon. And then we're probably just gonna Liliana next turn and start like again discarding more cards. If they draw another endurance, we might be in trouble, but we can pressure enough, that's not a problem. We also get Sundering Titan here because they're they're I guess our lands would also get I too, so we shouldn't do that. Let's just get Archon of Cruelty and say uh say you're up. Like these foundation breakers are like basically worthless. That's the only thing they, and it hits is Nile Spell Bomb. And if we draw Nile Spell Bomb, we'll just use it immediately. So, and they can't cycle them, they can't do anything with them. All right, so now we got two boom booms in the bin. I can just persist Archon here. If they let it resolve, discard Foundation Breaker, and then Living End, I get back my It That Betrays. Or I could just play Liliana and start eating their stuff. So yeah, plan is to Liliana plus discard Grave Titan here. And now our graveyard's stocked. So any living end like just ends the game basically. And then next turn, we'll persist back the Archon. So kind of bummer, folks. I'm sorry. I, I my stomach was feeling not too great, and I had to take a little a little break there. And uh, unfortunately, I while in the bathroom, I timed out the match. So not a not a fun uh, not a fun uh, mid section to our video here. Unfortunately, but. Sometimes uh, 
life happens in uh, ways you don't expect. But I think we were a- an extreme favorite to win this game. Um, they were basically had like one or two turns to draw exactly endurance. And I think we were in great shape. So I, I would like to count this one as a win. You all can decide what you want to do with it uh, as far as uh, the official record goes. But officially we are two and two. I would say, um, you know, we are probably we three and one for the most part. I mean, next turn again. They were passing a turn. We just drew a land for turn. We were going to persist back a boom boom. We have two other boom booms in the graveyard for uh, for living end. And I don't really see them beating this Archon of Cruelty. And then if they living end, I don't see them beating the Grave Titan and the it betrays. So uh, not not the most uh, you know ideal scenario, but uh, c'est la vie as they say. Going into match number five here, uh, decks been working very well. You know, definitely been pretty impressed so far. Um, again, I apologize, but my. Stomach was a little too unhappy, so uh, it was my uh, my birthday party yesterday. We did a both birthday housewarming party, so uh, I had some wild and crazy party, a lot of fun. So round five again. I apologize for that. All right, match number five. Match number five. No more uh, no more issues here. Hopefully on on our side. So hands pretty good. Uh, no mana. No amount of discard spell. We have persistent tutor, which is a turn four uh, creature. We have a brutality necessary we get Liliana we can keep this not great but fine certainly fine Delta Goat do we get our Godless Shrine probably probably get our Godless Shrine Copper Line Gorge opponent is playing Dredge um I don't know if that's good or bad for us honestly Probably not great. It also means we probably can't tutor because we uh, we need to cast brutality and try and get their cathartic reunion. They keep seven, which is kind of kind of stinky. I but of course, if we don't tutor this turn, then we can't turn four reanimate. I guess we're also just drawing to any large creature. Um, if we can just draw a large creature, we can just discard Liliana. Although, of course, Liliana discard is not very, you know, it's actually like beneficial for them, which is not great either. Hmm. I mean, Massacre Worm's pretty good. Or can be pretty good. Yeah, our targets, we don't really have like a knockout target against them. Um, hmm. I think we just have to arrest them. The worst part is that they have two copies of a. Uh, if they had two copies of uh, of Cathartic, but they say they have redundant, redundant pieces as well. Hmm. This is a tough choice. Tutor, next turn, Brutality. Yeah, I'm going to Brutality them. I'm just going to duress them. I'm not going to discard anything. All right. Cowards play. No blocking warriors here, that's for sure. We are now drawing to any large creature for the next two turns. And then we also have Tutor available also, so. All right, well, we got there. Uh, they had the Cathartic, and their hand is pretty anemic otherwise. So, got paid off. Got paid off big time, actually. Now they're going to Shriekhorn. They hit Ox and Card. They'll upkeep Shriekhorn. And then if they hit a Dredger, it's pretty good for us, because I guess they can, like, possibly Ox. All right. They crypt Shriekhorn, which is great. So very, very clutch discard there. Um, they would have gone bananas this turn, and now they're not going to do much at all. Assuming they don't just draw another one, which would, of course, be a thing that happens sometimes. But And now it's funny. We Liliana, but I don't think we actually plus it. Gemstone Mine, Narc Amoeba. That's when you know things are going good for you. Another tutor. (sighs) 
We're just going to Liliana. We'll make him sacrifice the Narco. And then... Um, next turn, we can just like double tutor. Or again, if he can just draw a Boom Boom, we can discard it to Liliana. So, yeah. I'm not going to give him Herborg, though, because they have a... Should I have to play Herborg? Jeez, that's, that's really annoying. Because giving them Herborg makes their, their gemstone mine last forever. I guess that isn't the end of the world, but... All right. Um, yeah, we're gonna Liliana here. If we were to tutor, they can ox, right? They have four, five, six. They actually can't ox. Even if we, oh, they can cycle the cave. So if I kill the narco and they cycle the cave, they actually can ox. Uh, so maybe we shouldn't um, Liliana. I'm just gonna play tutor. Play tutor. Play coffers. They go. Upkeep. All right, they hit a director, so now they can't ox. That's pretty pretty good for them. Um, another narco. We are going to feel bad if we uh, draw a large creature, but them's the break sometimes. So there they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They put in the foundry tapped. They could have cycled the cave dredged then oxed that's a kind of a weird one yeah i'm not sure why they wouldn't do that and keep the sink lead up in the graveyard for more dredges all right so reaping chill yeah, ox is pretty good all right so uh they had a narco they had two amalgams yeah we're probably in trouble this game This has got to be a good one here. I think I like to draw exactly on Mark Grave. Or Urborg. Uh, I think we're just dead. Yeah, I mean. Fortunately, our cards like Liliana aren't very good against them and stuff like that. So, yeah, we can like. This is five. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're just dead. All right. Tough game there. Tough game. Dredge, obviously, a very good game one deck. So, bring our spell bombs. Bring in plague engineer. Can didn't see any blood guests. I don't think you want plague engineer. Honestly, timely is kind of fine. Just like gain life by time is kind of cool. Don't want Phyrexia Arena. Uh, don't want Liliana. Unfortunately, like our pushes and bone shards are pretty bad too. I definitely want to bring in the Sphinx of a Steel Wind. It's a nice, uh, a nice target. Our discard spells like aren't great but vindicate so you don't really have like a ton for this matchup honestly um i guess they could have like their own ley lines and stuff so maybe i want these two i mean like bone shards and fatal push are all terrible so it's pretty easy to just take those out um we're limiting our own discard outlets a little bit but I don't think that's like solvable realistically because we, Liliana is just so bad against them and Bone Shards is pretty bad against them. And I think this is fine. Let's try this. Sure. It's definitely not great, but we can get Unbearer Rights if we need to. And of course, you just drop persist. That'd be cool too. Kind of a weird leak. Um, some unexpected decks for sure. Dredge, the Hammer deck, Tron. The stomping ground tabs. Okay. All right. Big draw here. This is Swamp. So is Sphinx of a Steel Wind our best reanimation target? Because we don't want them to discard. And it just has Vigilance and Lifelink so we can race. And it's protection from all of our stuff. They can't conflagrate it. 
I think it is, actually. I'm just gonna Sphinx here. They have a Cathartic, which is gonna be annoying. We can like Vindicate something and then Unmark Grave for Unbearer Rights, which is pretty slow, but. They have to have a cathartic here. There's no way they don't. Keeping a seven card hand with the no no play on turn one. So hopefully it's not too good. Thug thug. Amalgam chill claim another amalgam, but no way to recur stuff. That's good. Okay, so pretty pretty good for us here. Not a brick, but certainly sold the man a lot. They dredged a loam and two thugs. We could hit a land here. But I guess we're just gonna like set up for Sphinx next turn, so we'll just get on we'll just mark grave again. Alright. Go get unbarrier rights for somewhat slow somewhat slow uh reanimation, but turn four, turn four. Hopefully no graveyard hate on their side. And I think that a turn four Sphinx should probably do it. Hopefully. You know, given that it gains life on defense as well. I mean, it's even as first strike, which is cool too, so. Loam back, Blood Crypt, and City of Brass. That's the best you can do? Wow. Well, I guess they can't, no, they can't, they can't, can't age slam it. It's pro green. So we drop a ball coffers, which is fine. So black, 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 white. I mean, Sphinx. I mean, not the, not the most exciting draw on our side, you know, pretty uh, non-interactive and not super, you know, overtly powerful, but their hand mucked around a little bit and i think we're just like off to the races here i don't think they can beat this we've got a follow-up vindicate which isn't necessarily going to be great and they can't lightning axe it they can't nature's claim it they can't uh they can't block with stink which is important we have first strike they can block with stink it wouldn't be very good but Interesting blood crypt. Tapped. Sure. Just saying go. What is going on? They have some weird answer for this card I'm not, like, not thinking about. All right. I mean, oops. Inquisition U, which might be not a good idea, but I imagine it's fine. All right, I mean, whatever. Grants chill, chill, and some lands. Sure, so they already have Loam in the graveyard. Let's we'll put that there. I'm gonna unmark grave for, I don't even know. No point in vindicating any lands. Let's get like an Archon, I guess. It's funny because I almost wanna like draw Archon at this point, but. We can get Sundering Titan, actually, and just kill all their lands. Whatever. They just can't beat the Sphinx, I don't think. I don't think it matters. They dredge. They hit. Nothing of consequence. They got a Loam again? What did they get for the dredge? Uh, dredge Loam again? Sure. Get by Copperline Gorge, Wooded Foothills, and Wooded Foothills. I mean... I, I don't know what they're planning on doing with all these lands. You know, like. All right. Move to discard. Discard a Golgari Thug. Profane Tutor, sure. And again, no point in uh, vindicating anything. All right, so now they dredge, they hit an Archimede, but again, like, they're just at seven now. 
and there's just these prize amalgams don't line up super well against the Sphinx. I suppose the Narco can block the Sphinx for a turn, but just sort of like delaying the inevitable, I think. There's Stink Weed Imp, same idea. Copper Line Gorge, sure. All right, yeah, they're all back. Untap. Put the tutor down. We're about to go to over 30 life. That's pretty funny. We just, I mean, now we can just tutor for our thing and cast it, which is kind of cool too. So we'll attack. They'll block with whatever. We'll gain some life. Play Urborg, say go. Yeah. It's got first strike, so no problems here. All right, they've milled over a conflagrate and an ox, but again, like, I just don't, I just think they're totally cold to the Sphinx. And next turn we can Profane Tutor for Massacre Worm, just cast it and kill them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a path to victory for them, so. Usually, Reg's way to, to win a, uh, a game they're kind of like behind in is just like cheese them out with some creeping chills and stuff, but we're at 33, so. All right, cast Think We Didn't. So we'll just get Masker Worm, cast it, and kill them. And again, like even without Masker Worm, like if we just attack and gain six every turn, I just don't think they can win. So they chill here, they go to 10, and Masker Worm still kills them because it'll. it'll Kill the imp and the narco, and then they'll they'll take four, and then take six from the uh, sphinx. So, conflict rate four five. Okay. Just your uh, everyday lava axe. Discarding their entire hand. And now they're going to Ox of Agonis. Sure. I mean, the things they're doing are like, you know, pretty good. But again, I just don't think they're being Sphinx of a Steel Wind. So two more Narcos. Another narco. So now they're now they're a thousand percent dead. So we're going to tend them with the uh, masker worm. So again, even without masker worm, I think that I don't. I think that the sphinx just solos them here. Probably should have. Uh... Attack before oxing, but sure, it's fair, I guess. Go get massacre worm. Cast massacre worm. Kill you. All right, game three. Didn't even didn't draw spell bomb that game either, which is kind of cool. It wasn't like a really a great draw on our part. Like it was just like a pretty slow. You know, it's all right, kind of draw. Yeah, I don't know. Seems pretty, uh, seems pretty good. Dread is sort of like this weird burn deck almost, where if you can like gain some life, put them off, you can usually do pretty well. They don't necessarily deal with things super well. And again, like their main ways to deal with things are Nature's Claim, Confal Great, and then just killing you. And uh, Sphinx does a pretty good job against all of those. So. Opponents of a tank. Jeez. They are. Uh... All right, there we go. 
I prefer no ley line. Oh, there's Sphinx again. And Brutality. That's actually great. This hand's insane. This is like... So, like, our, our last hand wasn't necessarily great. This is an example of a really good Sphinx, Sphinx hand. So, you just have Discard Spell into Brutality. Discard into Persist the Sphinx. It'll be a 5-5. Five five, not a 6-6, six six, but... It's still good. Play the ability to stop them from playing Cathartic. Thoughtseize. Okay. That's pretty good. If they get the spike, might persist, but then I get just to fire back on them. And if they want to get into a longer game with me, it's totally fine too, I think. There's no way it's not persist here, right? Unless they have a Cathartic and they think they can just pop off next turn. Huh? Heh. <laughs> I mean, Thoughtseize bug and all, but why would they not take the Persist? Okay. Sure. I don't understand. I don't know what Unmarked Grave does right now. That's so terrifying. Their hand is Ancient Grudge. Doesn't do much. Conflagrate, Amalgam, Shriekhorn. Pretty bad hand. Pretty bad hand. We'll take Shriekhorn here and leave them with not a lot going on. And I mean, next turn we have Brutality, Discard Sphinx, and then we have Persist. And that should probably end the game again. And we'll be able to take one of their spells with a Duress, which card volume in their hand is important as a Conflagrate. So play Stomping Ground, Taps. Will they play, play Complicate for zero? Sure, it's fine. Profane Tutor. Uh, I'm thinking a Swamp here. I think the way we lose is getting cheesed out by our life holes, so it's just uh, not taking any damage. We don't need to. All right, it's Amalgam Grudge card. We are going to Brutality. And discard Sphinx and look at their hand. They have a Stinkweed Imp and a Prized Amalgam, which is totally fine. So if they want to, they can conflagrate us for two to discard these, but this is a really, really slow hand. Our opponent's hand is pretty bad. And I really don't understand why it took the Grave over the Persist. That might have been just like a an oopsie that like the cards look similar. I don't even know, but they take it to persist. Our hand is like a little scarier for sure. It would take us a while to put it together. Conflagrate for two. Play land. And sure. I mean, I think we're off to the races here. We're also already at 13. So they dredge three Creeping Chills, which is pretty wild. But at the same time, it looks fancy. It's not really actually advancing their board in any way. Uh, so, like, just not that scary. And they, uh, I guess they can start playing Stinkweed, Stinkweed, Stinkweed Imp every turn. But as long as we're gaining life, it's not a big deal, I don't think. It's a Grave Titan. And they're not going to block? I don't really understand what they're doing. They've made some peculiar plays. So you go. Tutor Clock starts. Dredge Narco Amalgam Amalgam. It's pretty good. I mean... Fifteen to sixteen. They dredged Thug. 
So even Loam is like not the most exciting here anyway. Uh, I mean, we're going to block, like, even though we're putting the imp in the graveyard for them, like, we're also just gaining five life, which is a pretty huge, uh, huge swing. And, like, they already have dredge cards in the graveyard. They can dredge two more cards this turn, but whatever. So, Cabal Coffers. Uh, okay. Attack. I mean, we're going to unmark Grave for... Honestly, maybe it's Sundering Titan? We can just cast Grave Titan next turn if we get, a, we get an Urborg also. Massacre. We cast Archon next turn? No, we don't want to short. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to put Sundering Titan in the graveyard, and we'll just go from there. We'll decide what we want to do. We can get Urborg, we can get a reanimation spell, we can get a lot of different things with this tutor. We can get a Nile spell bomb if we want to, like, they dredge five, nothing really good. Excuse me. We can get anything. I'm gonna get Urborg. Just cast Grave Titan, I think. I guess getting Sun and Titan's play is pretty good too. I'll just get Sol Sun and Titan, sure, whatever. Uh where is it? Persist, thank you. Draw for turn. Archon cruelty, sure. Attack. Yeah, I want. I gotta come out of land too, right? Yeah. It's like kind of annoying, but whatever. Just don't think it wins. So That's fine. Nice. I guess that's true. I, I just let a lot of ancient grudge me. Sure. I just I just can't beat the space. It doesn't matter. <sighs> That was probably not correct, though. I forgot about the Ancient Grudge. Um, but they just don't have any, any mana anyway now, so they're just not beating the Sphinx. That was that was a bad choice. I should have just gotten Urborg and cast Grave Titan. Just drag this game on a little longer. All right, there's a Narco. Sphinx is holding strong. Oh, yeah, they're just going to see. They just can't win. So, all right. So, we went three and two by the books, but I think we were over 90% to win that game three against Living End before uh, before Nature called. Um, so, pretty impressive showing, honestly. It's actually really fun. Um, makes use a lot, of, a lot of cool new cards. I'm actually really, really impressed with Profane Tutor. When I built the deck, um, I had like one or two in to start, and it just felt like it was the card that put everything together. You know, without blue for like, you know, card draw and stuff like that, or red for like looting effects, um, we need some way to put things together. And it just works really well off a discard because it's a very resource denial deck where you're kind of like Thoughts Easy, Thoughts Easy, Liliana, you. So you have time to make a tutor go off. And when the tutor goes off and you're untapped, you can just cast your spell. It's awesome. So again, well, it's a 4 1 with an asterisk, technically a 3 2, but overall, I'm very impressed. The deck's super cool. A lot of flexibility in the sideboard with the white, um, a lot of power. And then uh, the backup plan, as we saw in multiple games, worked really well, too. So I'm pumped about this deck, and uh, hopefully you are, too. Hope you enjoyed it, as always. Um, I have a companion article to this video on CoolStuffInc.com. Check that one out um, on CoolStuffInc.com proper if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on the YouTube channel here on Cool Stuff, make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, check out CoolStuffInc.com for free content every weekday and great deals on all your favorite games, magic, singles, sealed product, get your modern horizons packs. Promo code Jim5, 5% off your order, and a free Jim Davis Goblin token with your order as well. 
And um, I'm Jim Davis, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching for CoolStuffInc.com.